Take us inside. What's going on? You're there, boots on the ground, former player taking calls every day. What is the fallout here nearly three days later? Well, I think it really depends on your perspective. Now, if you're a fan, if you're just a fan of the, 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 the organization, you want the best draft pick that you possibly can have. So the sixth pick is much better than the ninth pick. You figure you can get a better quality player at that point at the sixth pick. But I, I can only speak from a player's point perspective. And, and I kind of feel the same way that Miles Sanders, when you're in the game, you know, you're just one, one singular focus. You're taught to win. That's the player's code, that when you're on the field, when you're on the court, you do everything that you can to win. And I just, I, I just remember being toward the end of my career. And if I was lucky enough to make it to week 17, right, and I, I, I lasted the entire season, lucky enough to make it to week 17 with, with your body being beat up every single day and then going out there and having to compete on Sundays, then, and, and I'm playing, then, then we're going to win the football game. That's the goal. Now, I, I think there's a big difference between coaches that, are, that, that go out during the week and say, hey, we're not going to play all of our starters. We're not going to put them in the position. And we're going to keep these guys out of the game. And that's what Doug Peterson did. He said, okay, these are 20 guys because of injury or whatever the situation is, they're not going to play. But to me, once you get in the game, once you get in the game, you play and you coach to win. And to me, you know, when I, when I watched it, uh, taking Jalen Hurts out at that point in the game was not coaching to win. And I think that's what a lot of the players had issue with. Right. What's up, B? How you doing, man? What's up, Key? How you doing, buddy? I'm, I'm hanging in there. Would it, be, would it have been different for you if Doug Peters decided to come to the players and, I don't know, have a conversation about the plan? Because it seems like and it sounds like there was no communication with him about what it is that he was intending on doing. You know, I think it, it may have felt a little bit better, but to me, again, I wouldn't have felt very, very much different because it looks like he comes to us with the plan on Wednesday. Hey, you know, guys, we're trying to get the sixth pick. And then now as a player on the team, as a veteran on that team, as a guy, Brandon Graham, in your 11th year, just making your first Pro Bowl, you're asking yourself, well, what, what am I doing on the field then? Why, why am I in a position to risk my life, my, my, my livelihood, my ability to stay healthy at the end of the season that doesn't really matter? Uh, and, and why am I out there on the field? So every player can question that. If you want to turn this into a preseason game, then turn it into the fourth preseason game. Take everybody out, all the people that, that are going to matter and suddenly you know, have NFL experience, take all those guys out. But that's not normally how you do things um, in the NFL. You go out there and you play to win. So to me, I think, um, you, you know, from the player's perspective, the, 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 the truth still is, that you go out there and you play to win every single play, every single down. That that you know, changing the way that you look at it to me wouldn't change perspective from the player side. Let me ask you this, B: Is it was it a collective effort by the organization as a whole, Jeff Lurie along with with uh, Howie Roseman, or was it just all Doug? Well, that, that's the big question. That's what everyone is trying to figure out. I mean, you, you know, you got you to gotta question, uh, if you're in the organization, again, <laughs> the perspective is, if you're in the organization, that you probably would rather have uh, the sixth pick rather than the ninth. In my opinion, if I'm the coach, my culture, the character of my program is more important than sliding up three picks. And, and I'll give you an example. L last year, the, uh, the Patriots, played the Dolphins early on in the season. They beat them by 43, 43 zip, right? You beat them up. I mean, just embarrassed them. Then you come week 17, they, they play each other again. And Brian Flores is down there in Miami trying to build a program. He's trying to build culture and character of his football team. He could have very easily said, you know what? I don't care about winning. I want a better draft pick. But he went out there and decided to have his team fight. Had to have it, he decided to have his team compete to try to win. Because he's trying to build, build culture. He's trying to build character in that locker room, in that organization. And that was important to them. To me, that's the same type of attitude and mentality I would have as a coach. So, yeah, I don't know where it came from, Keith, but I just think if I'm the coach, the only way that I know how to teach my, my guys to have a better season and to do better and to live the culture and character that, that we're trying to instill is to win football games. And every chance I get to, to do that, I'm going to try to do that. B. West, when you're talking about the culture 
what does it say about the relationship between Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz? Because it seems like that's one of the many fractures in the culture. What's your take on that? Well, it just doesn't seem that Carson and Doug are on the same page. Uh, you know, Jay, I, I think when you listen to Doug talk, he's saying that, that him and Carson have a great relationship. Then you fast forward and look at what Carson is saying, or, or the reports at least are saying, um, that Carson believes that the relationship is fractured and that it can't be repaired. So I, I think that's something um, that the Eagles have to figure out if it can be repaired. T to me, you know, the only way to repair it based upon some of the things that have come out, the reports that have come out, is for Carson to be named the starter and there to not be any competition at all. The, the, the hard part, and this is what we know about sports and, and being in the locker room, guys, is that, you know, when you struggle a season like Carson has struggled, that there's going to be competition. And, and at every other position, you know, probably besides the quarterback, there normally would be that competition. And so I, I think, um, you know, Carson has in love what was going on in the organization from all reports that we've seen. He hasn't, he hasn't appreciated the fact that um, Jalen Hurst was drafted. He hasn't pre appreciated the fact that he, he doesn't think they have supported him in the way that, that he would like as a quarterback. And that's a conversation that Doug and Carson and probably Howie Roseman, the GM, need to have um, and, and try to figure out if they can move forward. But based on the reports that uh, you know have come out and everything that we've heard that Carson feels, he feels that, that the relationship is fractured. And once you say those things, you put those types of comments out there in the universe, it's hard to backtrack from that. So it's hard for me to see uh, these two uh, sides of it coming back together uh, to win football games next year. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.